What is up, my new and friends? Today, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about getting Golang set up. I've recently started to get into this. I've been wanting to do a little bit of Golang for quite a bit of time. And so I finally got it set up on my machine and I want to walk you through how to do that yourself. I'm going to install everything on a Mac. And so if you're on Windows, I'm sorry, this is not the video for you, but I will show you getting started up and running and some basic syntax in Golang. Let's jump into it. If you haven't set up Homebrew, then visit this page and get started with that. Also, if you happen to use NeoVim, check out this video in the top right. And it's how I went through and installed Golang and the language server and all of that so that we could develop Golang in our favorite editor, which is NeoVim, of course. There's a few base packages that you will need whenever you are setting up Golang. And so first off, after you've installed Homebrew, install Core Utils, Curl, and Git. Execute this and you should see it. Download all the things that you need and install them. Next up, You'll need something to actually install Golang on your machine. For me, that is ASDF. And if you haven't installed that, then check out this page on getting started. Essentially, you'll want to clone the executable onto your machine and then run a command that will add the scripts into your path. Open a new shell or terminal session, or you can do this, which is exec shell, and this will give you a new shell session. Then if you type ASDF, then you should see something like this output, which means you have set it up correctly. Next up, we'll need to install an ASDF plugin for our language, which in this case is Golang. If we type in this command here, which is the ASDF community Golang, and you execute this, then you should see that it gets added. And once you have it installed, you can type ASDF and list. From here, you should see Golang, and you won't have anything installed, uh, I have 1.2.2.5 installed, but you will not have anything installed at this point, which is expected. Now that we have the plugin, we will want to install Golang, and you can type ASDF install Golang latest, or you can use 1.2.2.5, which is what we're using in this video. It's a good idea to check that the installed version is actually the architecture of your machine. For me, I'm on an M3, and so this should be ARM64, but for whatever reason, it was installing the AMD version. So if we type go and version here, then we can see that the ARM version is available. If you need to overwrite it, then there's this ASDF overwrite. So you can say ARM64 and then that Golang latest. Make sure that this matches whatever your architecture is of your machine. All right, we have Golang set up and now let's create our first .go file. If we wanna create a new directory, so I have all my Go projects inside of this folder, Go projects. Let's create a new one, which is hello go. We'll create that and then we'll cd into hello go. And then we will create a new file. So let's do a touch hello.go. This will create our new file. Let's open up our NeoVim instance, go into hello, and this should be all blank. Let's type in package main and then import format. And then from there, we can create our main function. And I'm getting some nice help here from Codium. And essentially, we have a main function uh, format. This is the package, I believe is the name, or maybe it's module. Correct me in the comments if I'm way off. But you'll have this, and you can call print line, hello world. And if we save this, and if we open up our terminal here, then we can create our mod file, which we'll need before we can run. In our case, we'll do go mod init hello, and this will create our go.mod file. For us, it already exists. I've done this command before, and we can type go run and dot, and this will execute, and we will see hello world. Success. You can also build an executable. So if we did go build, then we can run this. It should create an executable called hello, which is the same name as our go mod. And then if we run hello here, then we should see hello world as well. A go mod file looks exactly like this, where it has a module of whatever you want to call it, and then the language version. This mod file will describe all the module's properties, like its dependencies and the version of Go it's using. So this is how you want to manage all of those dependencies. Now let's create a test for some of our behavior. I've added a new function here, add, that has two parameters, A and B, which are both integers, and it's going to return the sum of those two integers, which just adds them together. And so if we added a test file, so we can say hello underscore test dot go. And so every, every test file needs to have an underscore test here. We'll write this, go to it, and then make this in our package main. 
and then import testing. And then if we add a function test add just like this, then we call our add function with two and two and we use this testing injection here, which uses that testing. And then we call error F and that outputs our error message. So if we save this and we go into here, then we can do go test and this will run our tests and we can see that they pass. If this was to be, let's say five instead, then we should be able to run that again and see some failing tests and we do. And that's all you need to be able to run tests and go. Another important tool to know with Golang is to format your code. And to do that, you can use the go format feature. And so if we went in here and messed up our formatting, saved it, reopened this and ran the go format and wrote back that test file, then if we run this, then it should execute and our formatting is fixed. Success. Some of the tools that I've been using to get up to speed and learn go personally, is this first one, which is a tour of Go. And I'll leave a link to both of these in the description. But this first one is really cool because you can go in and modify and edit some of the code and then run it to see how it behaves. The other one I've been using is Go by example. This one goes into a little bit of the CLI features and all the different variables and ways that you can use Go, which is really cool. So I'm still learning a lot of this, digging into it, but I will share both of these in the description. Hopefully it helps you to get started as well. If I've missed anything or gotten anything wrong, be sure to let me know in the comments. And I look forward to having a few more of these videos as I'm learning Golang personally, and I'll share back exactly what I learned and what's gone well for me. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.